I've got a question for you. Why in the world does anyone, anyone give a damn about John Lennox? Why does anyone consider him to be remotely credible? Not a credible apologist, a credible human being. Because he's absolutely not, and today, we're going to prove that once again. So, let's get going. A little while back, I had people asking about John Lennox, so I did one of his videos. I've probably done others in the past, I just don't remember exactly where. Today, I'm going to be doing another, just to show how completely irrelevant and worthless this idiot is. Taking apart these emotion-laden speeches is painfully easy, especially if you know anything at all about how apologetics works and why they do what they do. Because Lennox, like most other crappy apologists, isn't doing anything honestly. Honesty isn't part of the Christian playbook. So, let's go watch him fail once again. I approach this in two ways. The first one is your comment that secularism is collapsing. And one can analyze the defects in atheism and where it leads to and the millions of people that died in the last century. But coming over to the other side, what you're saying, Justin, you see, I am a scientist. No, you're a mathematician. Yes, that might be a quibble, but in truth, he has degrees in mathematics and philosophy, not in the hard sciences. Therefore, I think he's being disingenuous when he says that he's a scientist, especially when he starts to talk about the facts of science, because that's just not where his training is. But let's talk for a moment about what science is, shall we? Because if we go back to Henry Morris and Dwayne Gish, two of the so-called pioneers in creationism back in the late 70s and early 80s, both of them had actual scientific degrees. And then they turned around and started spouting nonsense that entirely violated everything that those degrees stand for. Your degree means only as much as it coincides with what science actually has to say. You being a scientist doesn't mean that everything that comes out of your mouth is science. And in fact, a lot of creationists and apologists, they will go out and get advanced scientific degrees on purpose just to lend themselves some credibility, and then they just ignore everything that they've learned and everything that science teaches and just spout nonsense that would get them laughed out of a university classroom and for some reason, they can't figure out what they're doing wrong. Science isn't that piece of paper. Science is the methodology that you use to reach rational conclusions. It doesn't grant you a license to just make crap up and believe stupid shit that comes out of a book of mythology. That's not science, and this guy is no fucking scientist. So, let's get back to the video. And one of the fascinating things is that science is a direct legacy of the Judeo-Christian tradition. Bullshit. I mean, yes, a lot of the earliest scientists were Christians simply because most people were Christians, especially where the church held massive political and social power and could, and did, bully people into at least professing beliefs in their imaginary friends if they didn't want to get their asses killed. However, science doesn't require Christianity. Nothing in science would change if all of its founders were Buddhists or Hindus or atheists. Science is something entirely separate from faith. Anyone can do science so long as they follow the rules of science. Christians can do it. Scientologists can do it. Muslims can do it. And atheists can do it. In fact, the hard sciences, at least, there are far more atheists doing it than theists because faith really can't stand up to the rigors of reality. 
Once you're looking at the evidence and not your own feelings, it becomes painfully obvious just how dumb religion actually is. You were saying we're all scientists now and all this is... No, it is not. And let's start absolutely basic. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Hebrew Bible written millennia ago knew there was a beginning. So did most other religious traditions that predated the Jews, because everyone has recognized for a very, very long time that things began. They were just adopting their own observations about reality and inserting them into their religious beliefs. Big deal. It's why a lot of religions have flood traditions. They happen to live in floodplains, which is where most ancient people settled, and they saw the destructive nature of floods firsthand. They then adopted that knowledge into their myths, often writ large, because they were applying their own experiences to their religious traditions. Yet people like Lennox seem so surprised by this when they shouldn't be. It's really pretty downright absurd. They are starting with a conclusion to which they are emotionally wedded, and they just run around looking for anything to support it, instead of doing actual science, and remember, Lennox is pretending that he's a scientist here, and going where the evidence leads. It was in the early 60s before scientists caught up with that. <laughs> <laughs> And the Bible was right. And Dawkins said, well, there was a 50-50 chance when I debated him. <laughs> and I said, at least the Bible got it right. <laughs> but because there isn't a 50-50 chance. Science follows the evidence, and it took until the 60s for that evidence to be available. The Bible is just a bald assertion that just so happened to be vaguely in the right ballpark. Now, you've got people like Lennox, and let's be honest, there are a lot of them, but they're running around just cherry-picking parts of the Bible and applying their own bald interpretations to make it look like the Bible is closer to reality than it demonstrably is. And they're not alone by any stretch of the imagination. The Muslims have been pulling this crap for a very long time, too. None of it is impressive. If these things were actually known back in ancient times, then they should have been able to make these predictions accurately long before science ever got there. They should have been able to give detailed scientific formulas back when it mattered. I mean, where was Christianity and the germ theory of disease during the Black Death? Oh right, they didn't know anything about it, because it's not in the Bible, any more than they could describe the intricacies of space-time before Einstein came up with it in 1915. Because all of this is just a load of bullshit. More seriously than that, you see, the fact that I'm a mathematician and interested in science, I just think about that. The fact that mathematics can describe what goes on in the universe is a matter of huge wonder. No, it's not. We made up mathematics to do exactly that. And that's why he's not a very good mathematician if he doesn't even know where it came from. That's also why he's sitting on this stage in front of a bunch of wide-eyed gullible Christians instead of, I don't know, the British Royal Society. Why is it so wondrous that something we created for a purpose actually performs the purpose it was created for as designed? Because a lot of people get that wrong, which is kind of shameful when you think about it. A lot of people, a lot of Christians that I've found, think that mathematics is something we've discovered, and that's just not true. It's a language that we invented for the sole purpose of describing reality, and it's been evolving ever since we did it. There's nothing wondrous about that. It's like saying, well, isn't it miraculous that the Russian language can be understood by the Russian people? Well, no, of course not. It was made for that purpose. It was singularly useful for the thing it was designed to do, just like math. Yeah, get over yourself, John. You're an idiot. Einstein once said the 
only incomprehensible thing about the universe is that it is comprehensible. And he saw the problem. Why does it work? Well, it's not an incomprehensible thing if you start from the idea that there is an intelligent God who made us in his image. Sure, if you start with your conclusion, reach for emotional reasons, and then look at absolutely everything through that lens, the problem is you've never proven your conclusion is reasonable to begin with. Now, that quote comes out of a paper called Physics and Reality, published by Einstein in 1936, and people like Lennox and Frank Turek love to grab snippets of Einstein and use them completely out of context. It doesn't really matter what Einstein said. The man isn't important. It's the information that he relayed that matters. And if you notice, the religious are really good at playing the argument from authority game. They toss out a lot of quotes, almost always taken out of context, as though the idea that some famous scientist or famous skeptic said a thing automatically makes it true. It doesn't. Reality doesn't work that way, but these people don't give a damn about reality, do they? They are just trying to appeal to a religious, very ignorant, very gullible audience, and I'm sorry, but if that's what impresses them, just doing name drops and saying, well, this is what they said, if that impresses you, you got some fucking problems. And therefore, we can do science. And that's exactly what the early pioneers of modern science, starting with Galileo and Kepler and Newton and so on and so forth, they were all believers in God. So what? We saw what can happen when you're not a believer in God back then, too. It tended to get you very, very, very dead. Even saying things that the church didn't like, as Galileo did, and he wound up under house arrest for the rest of his life, or like Giordano Bruno did, and he wound up being burned alive, it wasn't really good for your health to be honest about your religious beliefs back in the day. Now, I'm certain that had the overarching church not been in place, had people not been terrified to be honest, had people been allowed to speak their mind, you'd have seen a lot more open atheists throughout history. But that's just a guess, and really that's the best we can do. We can't go back and experiment. These people weren't religious because they were convinced that religion was true. At least, that's my personal take on it. They had to at least pretend to be religious so they could continue to do their work, but you can't really say much more than that. Religion, as we all know, fucks everything up. And therefore, when I hear that kind of question, I'm not remotely ashamed of being a scientist and a Christian because I want to argue that it was Christianity gave me my subject. Notice that he keeps claiming to be a scientist as though that lends him some degree of credibility, right? A uh, degree in the philosophy of science doesn't make you a scientist, sorry. But since when have the facts ever mattered to the religious? It's like a dog breeder pretending to be a geneticist. No, you're not. You just don't have the background or the training or the practical experience to make that claim. And neither does John Lennox. He's a mathematician with delusions of grandeur. That's it. Come on back when you actually have a degree in the relevant field and can demonstrate your credibility. I'm not going to be holding my breath. And C.S. Lewis put it brilliantly. <laughs> I'm glad you understood it in the end. <laughs> C.S. Lewis said, men became scientific because they expected law in nature, and they expected law in nature because they believed in the lawgiver. Again, that's complete bullshit. The reason that there is consistency in nature is because without consistency, we wouldn't be here. Nothing would. The existence of a stable universe, which is required for matter and life and all of the things that we see, that requires a predictable universe that operates in consistent ways. There is no lawgiver required. 
Of course, once again, Lennox is operating from his emotionally comforting conclusion and ignoring anything necessary to reach it rationally because he's not a rational person. He's just flopping his emotions out there as though they mean anything. And the audience, well, let's be honest, the audience in these things is always heavily stacked with religious believers, and they're just not that bright, and all they do is lap it up. I don't know if the religious aren't aware that we recognize these things or not, but we do. And I think we're getting to the stage now where serious atheist thinkers are beginning to re-examine the kind of naturalism that reduces everything to physics and chemistry. And one of them lives in New York. His name is Thomas Nagel. And he's a brilliant philosopher. Big deal. Because again, you notice that he's reducing it to sound bites and appeals to authority, right? Because, really, what else can he do? It isn't like he has any evidence to present for his side. But here's the thing. I don't give a damn about Thomas Nagel. I don't give a damn about John Lennox. I don't give a damn about Albert Einstein or Dave Rubin or anybody else. I care about the evidence. You and your empty claims can go take a flying leap. Come back when you have something tangible to present, and the religious never seem to have any of that, do they? It's why they spend so much time talking about people, and none at all talking about evidence. People with big brains don't matter in and of themselves. Only what they can discover about objective reality does. It's why the religious have so little of substance to say. Because they don't give a damn about reality. And he says something's going wrong because if everything is reducible to physics and chemistry, then so is your mind. But then why would you trust your mind? Because it seems to work. Because like everything else that we've discovered about the real world, it seems to work in predictable, consistent ways. And where it doesn't, we can learn why it doesn't and perhaps fix it. Now, I know a lot of people use this for woo-woo nonsense, but the saying goes something like we're the universe trying to understand itself, and I guess at some level some of that is true. We are part of the machine trying to understand the whole while suffering from all the failures and foibles of the machine itself. We're never going to gain a perfect understanding of how the universe works, but at least we're trying, and the more that we try, the less likely it looks like there was any god of any kind that was responsible. Despite the protestations of people like Lennox, the people doing the actual science, they are becoming less and less religious all the time. It's why last time I looked, and it's been years now, but the National Academies of Science was made up of 93% atheists. That's a lot of atheists. So he has to rely on philosophers and the like because they're not likely to have the same kind of strict scientific rigor as all the hard scientists do. Like I keep saying, it's pure cherry picking. In other words, atheism, taken to its logical conclusion, undermines the very rationality you need to trust to do science. And I'm not in for accepting a worldview that undermines the foundations of any kind of argument or discussion whatsoever. So I think that in the 21st century, we can push back on that very naive notion that God's out, we do science now. No, science actually brings God back in. Yeah, not so much. Because this is just a desperate attempt to remain relevant and I'm sorry, religion just isn't relevant anymore. It's why, in the Western world, religion is dying a slow, painful death. John Lennox comes from England, where, presently, the number of non-believers outnumbers the number of believers by a significant margin. They've been turning churches into car washes for decades. If there's one place where he has no business whatsoever spouting this complete bullshit, and I'm assuming this is being done in the UK because that's where Justin Brierley comes from, he's British too, and that's why I'm just calling bullshit on the whole thing. 
absolutely everything that John Lennox says is demonstrably false. It's just a desperate attempt to remain relevant in a world that's moving beyond his nonsensical beliefs. It's all just absurdly stupid. And that's really the problem here. It only takes the ability to take a few good-sized steps backward and see the desperation of these complete idiots. They spend all of their time making claims of importance about themselves and their beliefs, no evidence or anything, just claims, and then pretending that they're winning when demonstrably the exact opposite is true. And they don't expect us to be able to see what they're doing because they're not doing it for us. They're doing it for the rest of the delusional dimwits who are just as desperate to justify their own emotional faith and immature beliefs, and they're really not concerned if that comports with reality or not. Because who the hell needs reality, right? This is exactly why I don't respect people like John Lennox, and I don't know why anyone else does either. This isn't an honest conversation based on the facts, because to the religious, the facts are scary. This is a bald emotional appeal to the theists that have been artificially stacked up in the audience so he can get some applause when he's done. Imagine what would happen if local atheist groups ran around and handed out free tickets to the show just like the religious do. Because I've seen it happen before personally, and it never goes well for the theists. Because when 90% of the audience doesn't agree with you, they're not going to be clapping when you say something you think is pithy. It takes the piss right out of the religious, because this is all a stage show. It always has been, and it always will be. It's entertainment, not intellectual discourse. It's why all online debates get exactly nowhere because they're just up there pushing talking points, not having an honest conversation. John Lennox is exactly the same way. Why anyone gives a damn about this fossil, I will never know. He's just as much of a scam artist as all the rest. This whole thing, whether you like it or not, it's all a complete joke. Boom, dick